Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears and I'm back again with another card using some products from the Pretty Pink Posh brand new birthday release. Pretty Pink Posh is celebrating their 10th birthday and if you haven't seen my unboxing of all of the products in the release, I will have a link down in the description box and at the top right corner of this video to that unboxing, so be sure to check it out. But today's card is going to be a penguin party box card. This is going to be so much fun to make. So let's go ahead and take a look at the products that I'll be using. This is the layered balloons stencil which is a three layer stencil that makes lots of balloons you can use on a background of a card. I also have the party time stamp set. There are birthday cakes, balloons, presents, party hats in that set. I'm also going to be bringing in an older stamp set. This is the Penguin Pals stamp set and I'll be using some of the penguins from there. And then for the structure of my card I'm using the scallop box card die set. So we'll be making a box card today. So I'm going to start out by stamping my images. I'm going to stamp them on this brand new cardstock from scrapbook.com. This is their mixed media cardstock. It is a heavyweight cardstock and it's perfect for coloring with watercolors or water-based inks. So I am going to be using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers to color these up and my markers blend beautifully on this paper. So I'll go ahead and pick out the stamps that I'm going to be using for my box card. I'm going to ink them up with my Versafine Onyx Black ink and then I will stamp them down. Now I am going to bring in two more stamps of the party hat because I am going to have three party hats on the penguins. So I stamp that party hat out two more times. So I'm starting out by coloring the cake from the Party Time stamp set and my cake is going to be purple with teal frosting. I love those colors together. Purple and teal are so pretty together. And I'm doing some easy coloring. So I'm just laying down the lilac color and then using my blender marker to blend that color towards the center. And I refer to this as easy coloring because it's really just one color purple marker and then blending that color. And you can use the blender or a water brush to do that. And as I'm using the blender, I quickly realize that it is running out of the blending solution. So you will see me here shortly switch over to a water brush. And the water brush that I use is the Pink and Main Easy Flow brush. And you can also use a paint brush dipped in water as well. Just make sure there's not a whole lot of water on the tip because you don't want to overly saturate your paper or you will end up with water splots on the um, colored portion of your stamps. So for the turquoise color I use the turquoise green. For the candles I use the light carmine. For the flames on the candles I used the yellow and I will continue to use those same colors for the remaining stamps. So for the presents, the balloons, and the party hats. I will have all of the colors that I've used in a coordinating blog post link so be sure to check the description box of this YouTube video for that blog post link. So real quick I do want to let you know that the card that I'm making today is part of an Instagram hop where you have the chance to win a gift certificate to the Pretty Pink Posh store. All you have to do is head over to my Instagram page at Lisa Mears Designs and find the post that shows a picture of this card and you'll be able to read all about the hop in the description of that post. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to music and let you watch the coloring and I will be back at timestamp 818 to finish up this card. <music>
now that all of my stamps are colored, I'll use the coordinating dies to die cut them out. And I'll set them aside as I do some stenciling. So I'm using the layered balloons stencil. This is a three layer stencil and it's going to give me a background of balloons I can use on a card. I am going to use this on my box card today. And for stencil layer A, I'm going to color some of the balloons in this purple color. This is the shaded lilac Distress Oxide ink. I'm also going to put a little bit more ink on the edge of each balloon just so that I can try to get it to look like there's more of a shadow on the left side of the balloon. So once I finish with the shaded lilac, I'm going to next use the Salvage Patina. This is a beautiful light teal color and I'm going to ink up the remaining balloons on this stencil layer A with the salvaged patina. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one by adding a little bit more of a darker ink or a little heavier hand with that ink on the edge of those balloons. Next I will remove that stencil and I will line up stencil layer B on the exact grid mark that I had the first layer. So just make sure they're lined up perfectly and then I'm going to come in with two additional ink colors. I will be using the squeezed lemonade which is this really bright light yellow color and then I'm also going to be adding the worn lipstick ink as well. Now even though I used four different color inks for this stencil, this stencil would look just as great if you used one or even two color inks for those balloons. Now the third layer is the layer that has the strings on all of those balloons and I'm going to be using a light gray ink which is the Hickory Smoke Distress ink to ink up all of the strings for those balloons. So once I finish inking up all of those balloon strings, I'll go ahead and remove that stencil and look how pretty that background is. This would make for such an easy card, just add a sentiment to it and make that a quick birthday card. I will be using my balloon panel for some of the panels in my scallop box card. So here's what the die set looks like. And I went ahead and die cut the main pieces of the box card out of some purple card stock. So these pieces here, that's the structure of the actual card. So they do have score lines and I'm just folding out the score lines. That small rectangular piece I die cut twice, once for the front of the box and once for the inside of the box. And then this large piece is for the back and the sides of the box. So on the smaller rectangular pieces, I'm using some double-sided adhesive tape to put on the front of those flaps and I'm just putting it along the edge right where the score line is. I'm going to attach one of those panels at a time. So I'll start with this one by removing the backing of the double-sided adhesive tape. I'm going to take my large panel and I'm going to just line up the edge of the side of that panel or the side of the box, line it up on that score tape, and then I'm going to attach the other side as well. So this piece right here is the actual front of the box and I'm just pressing that down just to make sure that that adhesive is really sticking. Next, I'm going to take the other rectangle panel and remove the backing of the double-sided adhesive. This panel is going to go inside of the box, so I'm just going to put it right in the middle here and attach the sides of that rectangular panel to the sides of the box card. So I'm just going to get my finger in there and I'm going to make sure that it is really sticking to the side. And if you wanted to, you can always die cut another one of these rectangular pieces and add another one as well. But I'm just going with one on the inside 
that'll do for the card that I'm making today. Now this card does fold flat for mailing and hopefully you saw that earlier when I did fold the sides flat. So the other dies that are included in this die set are scallop edged dies and I am going to die cut them with the balloon paper that I created using the stencil. These are layering pieces so these will layer right on top of the um, back panel of the box card and then there are two smaller ones for the side and there's a larger one for the front. So I'll go ahead and glue this panel down to the back of the card. I wanted to make it look like there were balloons flying in the air. Now this layer is for the front of the box card. I'll go ahead and die cut that out. But before I add it, I am going to add a sentiment to the front. I added the sentiment, let's party from the party time stamp set and now I'll go ahead and add that piece to the front of my box card. I decided I wanted to go ahead and have balloons on the side of that box card and I didn't have enough of the paper left over to die cut the two side panels so I just die cut them out of white cardstock and I'm just going to stencil some balloons over top of those layering pieces and I'm going to use the same color ink so that I can keep it consistent with what I had initially. So I use the shaded lilac and the salvage patina on stencil layer A and then the squeeze lemonade and worn lipstick on stencil layer B and then I added the strings and used the hickory smoke and then once I had my balloons on those layering pieces I added those layering pieces to the sides of my box card. Once all of those layering pieces are added, I went ahead and started adding all of my stamps. So the large cake stamp with the party hats and the balloons and presents, I added that to the rectangular insert that's in the middle of the box card. I added a party hat to one of the penguins and putting one of the cupcakes in his hand. I'm just going to put glue on the very bottom of that penguin and put him right over top of the front panel where it says let's in let's party. And I also put some double sided adhesive foam on the balloons with the present so that they're popped up on the back panel. I think that adds for more dimension, making it look like those balloons are separate than the back panel. I put some glue on the front of the two penguins next to each other and added it to the front panel. And I'm going to add glue over the entire back side of the last penguin and add him flush pressing against the back panel of that card. I'm adding one more party hat on the one penguin in the front and adding another party hat on the penguin in the back of the card. I just love the way that this card turned out. It looks like such a fun party. You guys know that I love to make scene cards and using this scalloped box card die makes it so easy to make a fun scene inside this card. So if you're interested in any of the products that I use today, check the description box of this YouTube video or on my coordinating blog post link. All links will be down in the description box below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like videos like this and want to see more, be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so that you'll be notified every time I release a new video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.